Good morning. I'm Reverend Peter Preble, the Interim Senior Minister here at Second Congregational Church of Beverly, and I'm pleased to welcome you to our virtual worship service this morning on this, the 13th Sunday after Pentecost, August 30th. Hard to believe that August is coming to a close, but here we are at the end of the month. A couple of announcements before we begin. We will continue our virtual chats on uh, Tuesday morning and Thursday afternoon, Tuesday morning at 10, Thursday afternoon at 4. If you'd like to be included in those chats, you can send an email to the church office, and we'd be happy to include you on the list when the announcement goes out with the Zoom link. Also, next Sunday, the first Sunday in September, we will be back in the parking lot at the church. So worship will begin at 9.30, and as we did the last time, please plan to bring a chair and a mask, and we'll keep appropriate distance and the whole nine yards. We will be serving communion. Uh, we're still trying to work out the details on how all that's going to work, but uh, we will be serving communion, so uh, be prepared uh, for that as well. Thank you again uh, for joining us uh, this week here in our virtual worship service. Whenever you're watching this, whether you're watching it on Sunday morning or another time during the week, we are so happy uh, that you've chosen to spend a little time with us this morning. So now if you'll join me, please, in the call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. You who are many are transformed to become one in Christ. We who are many are called to worship God, the three in one. Let us worship him. pray together the opening prayer as printed in the bulletin. Ever-present God, who is at the side of every creature in creation, renew our lives so that we may discern and do your will, what is good and acceptable and perfect. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let us pray together in the words our Savior taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the 12th chapter of the letter of Paul to the Romans, starting with verse 1 through verse 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as one in body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one in body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. And here ends today's reading. And let us pray. God of revelation, mere flesh and blood cannot reveal divine truth. Only your spirit can give that gift. Be in my breath and voice, be in our ears and understanding, that through these words your word may be known. Amen. St. Paul tells us in the reading that we heard this morning, present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, sacrifice uh, isn't something that we take to uh, rather uh, easily here uh, in America. Sure, uh, we understand that sacrifice is necessary in some professions like police, firefighters, the military, etc. But for the average American, sacrifice is looked at from a negative place. One thing I've learned during this time of pandemic is that, by and large, I think most Americans really only care about themselves. Now, that may be an unfair statement, but we cannot even get people to wear masks when they're in public because, well, I have my rights. Well, I for one believe that my right to live outweighs your right not to wear a mask, but to each his own, I guess. What Paul is calling on us to do is not from a take up your cross sort of thing or an expectation that, that we have to die as part of our discipleship. And Paul links this idea of bodily living sacrifice to discerning and then living into the will of God. Paul is forcing us to think about our own faith in more concrete ways, like living into God's will might mean doing something that might put us outside of our comfort zone or go against the majority. This passage reminds us that we're all called according to our gifts. Yes, we are all called, all of us. And part of that calling is to use our bodies, maybe as prophets, ministers, mm -hmm. teachers, exhorters, givers, leaders, and in acts of cheerful compassion. So we're all called to do all of these things, but as we heard in the passage, it says, according to our gifts. So we're not all called to do these things. Some of us are called to do some of these things, but we are all called. It's, hang with me. It, it'll become clearer. Now, the third verse that we heard today points to something just a little bit different. This is what it says. I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. I hate to break it to you this way, but it's not about you. It's not about me. The world does not revolve around us. Again, this goes back to my earlier statement about sacrifice. Now, perhaps one of the sacrifices that, that Paul is pointing out to us is that we have to admit this fact that it's not about us. And then we have to live into this fact. So we have to live for something else. We have to live for someone else because it's not about us. All right, maybe sometimes it is, but overall it's not. We all need that day, right? We all need that day when we take some time when it's really just about us. And that's okay. But overall, the other 364 days of the year are not about us. 
Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves here, I'm not saying that we should give over control of our bodies to others. It, you know, the church has been saying that, especially to women, for far too long. But for Paul, the word sacrifice is a positive term of consecration or of dedication to the will of God that eventually will result in the use of our gifts that God has given us through our bodies. So Paul looks at it as a very positive thing, that it's a dedication. It's a consecration, if you will. We enter into covenant, big word in our congregational polity, covenant. But again, this doesn't imply that we are to abuse our bodies or allow anyone else to abuse us. So let's get that meaning of sacrifice sort of out of our heads. But Paul doesn't stop there, and he continues with this idea, this metaphor, if you will, of the body and asks us to think of ourselves as the various parts, the constituent parts of the human body. Now, each part has different functions, right? The hand does what the hand does. The arm does what the arm does. The hand can't do what the arm does. It doesn't work that way. Each part has value. And each part is connected to another part in a very intimate way. And each part of the body works not to bring praise on itself, but in support of all the other parts. If the body is healthy, then all the other parts will work together. And the same can be said for a church body, as well as society as a whole. If we look at the greater good rather than the parts, things will work much better. In the immortal words of Mr. Spock, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Mr. Spock was saying, it's not about you, it's not about me, it's about us. Now, this is the idea, if we want to put it into theological or biblical terms, this is the idea of loving your neighbor as yourself. Now, you just knew I was going to bring that up, but it's loving your neighbor as yourself. And just like every part of your body has value, so does every human being have value. And part of the sacrifice, I think, that Paul is talking about here is sacrificing some of our own ideas and some of our own stereotypes when we look at another human being and we look at them any other way than as a child of God created in the image and likeness of God. Now, take this for what it's worth, but in my opinion, the breakdown that we're witnessing in our society has very little to do with the right or the left, Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, or anything like that. I think what's caused the breakdown in society is that we cannot see the humanity in the other person. And when we stop thinking of the other person as a person created in the image and likeness of God, then it's easy just to hurl insults at them. And I say this a lot. You know, if we call ourselves followers of Jesus, then we have to love everyone and treat everyone as we would want to be treated without condition. And I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult to look at the person who is perhaps diametrically opposed to everything that you stand for and be able to look at them as a fellow human being. It's something that I struggle with. I think it's something that we all struggle with. But the struggle is real, and we have to struggle. We have to work through it. We have to be able to do that. We have to be able to set aside those things and be able to look at one another as the human beings, the beautiful human beings that we are. When Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was, Jesus responded, love God and love neighbor. If you've listened to me preach for... <laughs> Any length of time, you know that I believe this is central to what we believe and what we do as Christians. Love God and love neighbor. But he didn't stop there. Sure, he talked about enemies, but that's not where I'm going with this. He didn't stop there. He said, on, all the, on these two things hangs all the law and all the prophets. Now, I consider that to mean that nothing else matters except our love for God and how we treat others. Not that the rules don't matter, not that the commandments don't matter, but it doesn't matter if we don't love God and we don't treat others as we want to be treated. 
And again, I believe this is the central point of the gospel message, central to everything that we profess as Christians. Now, at the end of the day, if we go back to the body metaphor for a second, if all the parts are working together, then the body works. If all the parts are working against each other, then things don't work so well. Let us strive. Let it be our mission. Let it be our call. Let it be our spiritual gift to be the ones who help to get the body back working together. Because when things work together, things work. Amen. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the power. now to that time in the service when we join our hearts and minds together in prayer. If you have any prayer requests, you can put them in the chat box next to the video, or if you're watching this on Facebook, you can add them in the comments section below. Let us pray. God of all, thank you for hearing these prayers. For the human family with whom we share this world, those closest to us and those whose names we will never know, we give you thanks and ask your help in living into our identity as your children. We pray especially for the world, the world we share with all creation, the plants and the animals that we see each and every day, and the wilderness we have never seen. We give you thanks and we ask your help in living into our identity as stewards of your earth. We pray for local, national, and international leaders, those whose policies we appreciate, and those with whom we struggle. We give you thanks and ask that you be at their side, guiding them to act in justice and mercy. We pray for joys and concerns that occupy our thoughts today, those we have spoken aloud, and for those that we ponder inwardly. We give you thanks and ask that you be at our side, guiding us to recognize that our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And now we ask you to hear the prayers that we lift in silence. Accept and heed all these prayers through Christ Jesus, our Lord.
and let us pray together our prayer of dedication as printed in the bulletin. Almighty God, you took a baby from the Nile and used him to lead your people to the promised land. Take our offerings and use them for your people in this land and throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed to live as the body of Christ in the world. May the Lord who made heaven and earth, the Christ who lived and died for all, and the Spirit who renews our minds and hearts abide with you and all God's people, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for watching, and have a great week.